Hi, South Point friends and family. This is a day number three in our devotional series called Finding Peace in Uncertainty. Yesterday, we discovered that our state of mind, which simply means how we think, will directly determine our daily actions. Now, if you happen to miss that, you can catch up on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. Either of those is fine. Our hope for today is that maybe together, you and I can discover how to have peace of heart in the middle of so much unknown. And this is so important because of a truth that, listen, you already know, but it's something that we rarely say out loud. Matter of fact, this issue is something that Jesus himself addresses. Matter of fact, Luke records it in his gospel, Luke 645. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus says, a good person produces good things from a treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from a treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. Jesus is reminding you and me and we that whatever is in our heart will always be revealed in how we treat people. In short, whatever's on the inside of our heart, good or bad, won't stay on the inside. It will always find its way out into the lives of others. Think about it. If we don't have peace in our hearts, how will our behaviors towards people be the good that we hope for? I believe that none of us wants the funk on the inside to hurt those around us that you and I are called to love. Now, based on what Jesus tells us, there are three conditions of the heart that all of us should avoid in this uncertain season because they'll lead to results that none of us wants. Now, the first condition of the heart that we all should avoid is what I would call the fearful heart. You see, a scared heart feels alone because the scared heart can only see a future that is disconnected from people and from purpose. When you and when I and when we allow fear to rule the day in our hearts, we end up with a response of distrust towards God, towards others, and toward our family. This overreaction of distrust or fear, it will hinder our connection with others and our contribution to the world as we go into self-preservation mode. Can you see it? A fearful heart creates a never-ending cycle of panic, and that panic then leads to behaviors that cause the very results that we're trying to avoid. Now, the second condition of the heart that we want to avoid is what I call the cold heart. In this vast uncertainty that surrounds our current situation, it is so easy for us to fall into self-serving mode. When you and I sense that panic might be the major response of others, our primary focus becomes one of making sure that our wants and our needs are met, even if it comes at the expense of others. Sadly, I've discovered this to be true of myself. Sometimes I will allow uncertainty to become an excuse to become selfish and uncaring. A cold heart lets you and me and we skip the call of Jesus to sacrifice and serve others. Now the third condition of the heart that we want to avoid is what I call the bitter heart. Life isn't fair and all people are flawed. Every one of us will experience undeserved hurt in our life. And personal hurt often creates an IOU that cannot be repaid. And over time we go from they owe me to everyone owes me. And feeling old will always rob us of the gratitude and kindness that is given freely in friendship. A bitter heart will cause you and I to treat those who care for us like they are the enemy. And it can ruin meaningful relationships. So how do we make sure we don't end up with a heart condition that is fearful or a heart condition that is cold or bitter? And here's what I've discovered. You and I, we can never give what we don't have. If you've ever ridden on an airplane, right before they take off, they say, listen, in case of emergency, the oxygen mask will drop. And before you try to care for some others, put the mask on yourself so that you can care for others. If we don't stay connected in our life-giving relationship with God, our hearts will become dry and empty. And so the challenge for all of us today is to answer the question, how are we connecting with God on a daily basis? Because without God, what we'll have to offer others will always fall short. My hope is that in this time of need where the world needs a community of good-hearted people to rise up and to be the voice of hope and reason is that you and I will be able to pass on the grace and goodness that God has given us in Jesus. May His love fill our hearts so full that we are soft and kind and good. And as we go forward, let us remember today that you matter deeply to God.